Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about why Adam Aaron's share count is actually wrong and why synthetic shares likely do exist. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Adam Aaron recently tweeted saying inbound tweets ask over and over for a share count. AMC has done a share count six times in the last year. We know of 516.8 million AMC shares. Some of you believe the count is much higher. As I've said before, we've seen no reliable information on so-called synthetic or fake shares. Now, I'm not too sure why Adam Aaron is bringing this up again, but he has said before that he has no reliable information on so-called synthetic shares and that Adam Aaron doesn't have access to that data. And even if he did, he can't comment on it. I think people just still aren't getting to grips of what a share count actually is and why a share count isn't helpful to us. I've spoken about a share count multiple times over the last year and said that it will not help. You may say, Tom, why will a share recount not help? Well, AMC posted this Q&A section in their last investor presentation. It said AMC has received a number of inquiries regarding so-called synthetic shares and fake shares. They've said AMC has no reliable information about this. Therefore, we can make no comment in this regard. AMC only maintains records regarding the shares it has legally issued and which are outstanding. And they also said the company does not record or have access to information regarding any share lending or short selling transactions other than what is publicly available from third party providers like Ortex. So basically Adam Aaron can't see synthetic shares and can't see any more information on short sales other than we can from Ortex, which isn't potentially the most reliable platform. Now I wanna break this down and explain what kind of information Adam Aaron actually has access to and what Adam Aaron can really see. So for example, Tom goes to the shop and buys 10 American footballs. Tom registers all of those 10 American footballs and keeps an accurate count. Tom then drives to a football stadium with all of his 10 footballs that he's legally registered. Tom then recounts the 10 balls and discovers that there is still 10 American footballs. And therefore, Tom concludes there are only 10 American footballs at the entire football stadium. And therefore, Tom can't reliably see into the storage rooms at the football stadium. However, fortunately enough, Kenny G, a spectator sitting in his car a few cars down, says that the storage rooms are empty. And therefore, Tom's legally issued and legally registered 10 footballs must be the only 10 footballs in the entire football stadium. Now, I'm sure if you've been to a football stadium, you know how ridiculous that sounds to only have 10 balls in the entire football stadium, all of which are owned by Tom in his car sat outside. However, because Tom can't reliably see into the storage rooms at the stadium, can't see into the locker rooms, can't see into the player tunnels, he can only assume that all 10 of his balls are the only 10 balls in existence. And therefore, as Boss Blunt says, Adam Aaron is fulfilling his legal obligations and is not able to discuss a speculation regarding synthetics or fake shares. And that's because AMC does not record or have access to information regarding any share lending or short selling transactions other than what's available from third parties like Ortex. Now, somebody asked Peter Han what his opinion was of Adam Aaron's tweet, and Peter Han replied saying the key word is reliable. I've seen many things that would support the existence of synthetic shares. Would I want to go to court with my observations and assumptions? No, only the SEC and the DTCC have access to reliable proof because obviously Ken Griffin and other market makers are the ones creating synthetic shares. These market makers don't tell Adam Aaron how many synthetic shares are in existence and therefore he can't speculate or can't reliably measure how many there actually are. Adam Aaron can't exactly say, Ken Griffin, how many synthetics have you created just so I can keep a little tally and tell my Twitter followers and tell the apes just how many synthetics you've created. But please don't lie because I need to know the exact truth, the reliable truth of how many synthetics you've created. But obviously, Ken Griffin in his wildest dreams isn't going to tell Adam Aaron and the apes how many synthetics he's actually created because that would be stupid of him to do. And guys, if you haven't already, you can currently get 10 free stocks worth up to $2,500 each, aka a total of up to $25,000 in free stocks and a free share of Lucid on top of that when you sign up to Moomoo right now using the link in the description below.
Moomoo Moo and Futu also do not accept payment for order flow, and I've also found out that Moomoo Moo and Futu don't even lend your shares out to other hedge funds as well, and therefore Moomoo Moo is brilliant for buying those AMC shares. And I think you have to remember, as Retail Stock says, the man quite literally wore no pants on a live feed interview. He also said predatory shorting on national TV, and he told the shorts to choke on that and acknowledged our frustrations live on an earnings call. You have to remember that Adam Aaron purposefully wore no pants on a live interview with Trade Trades and purposefully knocked down his webcam so everyone could see the naked shorts. Obviously, Adam Aaron has no reliable information on so-called synthetic shares because obviously Ken Griffin won't tell him and therefore Adam Aaron can't legally speculate on how many synthetics there actually are. However, something we can reliably measure is this tweet from Unusual Wales, who said on Friday and Monday, hedge funds sold stocks at the fastest pace on record. Now, obviously, selling stocks is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Markets don't crash unless stocks are sold at fire sale prices, and therefore, hedge funds selling stocks at fire sale prices will crash the market. But why would hedge funds sell stocks at fire sale prices? It's because they need to reallocate their portfolio to recoup losses suffered in other portions of their hedge funds. Where are these hedge funds suffering losses? It's not in the property market because CDOs and mortgage bonds haven't exploded. Yes, crypto is falling, but it's because these hedge funds are also selling their crypto to distribute and recoup those losses. The location of their portfolio where those losses are happening is their heavily over leveraged short bets that are continuing to hemorrhage money for those hedge funds and therefore they need to sell off their crypto and sell off their blue chip stocks to cover those losses and reallocate and redistribute their portfolio to meet those margin calls and those margin requirements. Something else that can be reliably measured is this tweet from Mac10. You can see on Google Trends, the term recession is absolutely peaking and absolutely spiking. The last time the term recession was searched this many times was obviously in early 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Now, before that, the last time recession was searched was back here in 2008 and 2009 during the financial crisis. And actually right now, the term recession is being searched more times and with greater frequency than it was back in 2008 and 2009. And I don't think it will be long until the Google Trends for recession ends up overtaking the amount of searches that we saw back in 2020. And obviously the last time this search trend for recession peaked, we saw bailouts in 2020, we saw massive cash printing back in 2019, and we saw massive bailouts back in 2008 and 2009 as well. But right now we have maximum Fed tightening. Obviously the Fed has now just entered into QT or quantitative tightening and is also raising rates, not cutting rates like it did in 2008, 2009 and in 2020. Now something else I thought was very, very interesting and very worrying was this tweet and a certain reply from Shibatoshi Nakamoto, who said it's the end of the world as we know it, tweeting a meme of the Grim Reaper blasting through stocks, blasting through cryptocurrency and just about to blast through real estate. Shibatoshi Nakamoto is saying the stock market and the crypto market has crashed and the next market to crash is the real estate market. We also received a reply from none other than Elon Musk saying true. Clearly Elon Musk thinks the next market to crash will be the real estate market as we enter the coming recession. And it's not only Elon Musk, but a Wall Street veteran also said the economy is going to collapse. And he says we are going to go into a really fast recession. A veteran investor in Bitcoin bull does not have a rosy outlook on the economy, which he described as headed for a substantial downturn with the likelihood of a fast recession on the horizon. He said housing is starting to roll over, inventories have exploded, and at the same time there's layoffs in multiple industries and the Fed is stuck and they have to hike interest rates until inflation rolls over. Now obviously yesterday central bank policymakers agreed to deliver an unusual 0.75 or 75 basis point rate increase. It was the largest increase in the central bank's policy rate since November of 1994. And he said they are hiking into the popping of a bubble, referencing the soaring price tags on luxury Swiss watches and other assets. 
But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.